So let's do some examples, all right? And what I'm gonna do, um, so you can have the option of working alongside me if you want. Um, I'm gonna do one, I'll do the CO2, and then I'll do the other three, um, and you should work alongside me, or pause it and work on it your own, and see if you come up with the same answer that I do. So let's first do CO2 together. So carbon has four valence electrons, one, two, three, four. Oxygen has six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's two of them. So uh, four plus two times six gives me 16. So that's the first thing I need to do is count up the total number of valence electrons. Now I'm gonna do the six Y plus two rule, the Clark's rule, okay? So there's um, three atoms in this molecule and none of them are hydrogen. So I can say six times three plus two Aha, and that gives me 20, okay? And because there is a difference of four, that's gonna either equal one triple or two doubles. And we actually have to make a logical decision on what it should be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is recognize carbon is definitely the central atom because carbon has more bonding capacity than oxygen, okay? And I'm gonna surround it with oxygens, and I'm gonna put a bond here and a bond here. And let's just stare at this thing for a minute, okay? And as you look at this, hopefully you can arrive at the conclusion that it's gotta be two double bonds, because why the hell would one of these be a triple and the other would be a single, right? That's, that's contrary to what these atoms and molecules want to do. They want to spread themselves out where they can, okay? So if you've got two identical atoms, like two oxygens on the other side, and it's this situation where it's one triple or two doubles, it's always going to be two doubles because the atoms want to spread around. The electrons want to spread around. So that's going to be two double bonds, okay? And so now if I count up how many I've used, I've used two, four, six, eight. So I've used eight of my 16. So remember, 20 doesn't give me the number of valence electrons. It's just this number that I use on Clark's rule to compare, okay? So I've used eight of the 16. So I've got to distribute um, eight more around this thing. And I also remember that I'm doing the octet rule. I have to satisfy the octet rule. So if I look at carbon, carbon has two, four, six, eight. So carbon is good to go. Carbon is already surrounded by eight electrons. But what about each oxygen? Well, each oxygen is only surrounded by two, four. Even though they're sharing, and they're not sharing equally, right, because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, even so, oxygen only has four electrons. So I need to put another four electrons, and we just kind of spread them around like that. So now this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen will have two, four, six, eight, okay? That gives me eight and eight. Eight plus eight equals 16. So I've used all 16 of my valence electrons. And here's my Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, two double bonds. Okay, so I'm gonna play the music. And um, if you wanna work alongside with me, you can. If not, if you prefer to pause it, do it on your own and then see how you do. Um, you can do it that way as well. All right, let's go for it. Let's see, I'm gonna skip tracks too. Let's see what we got. Let me find one I like. Ooh, wait, hold on, I'm gonna go back. Now I'm just messing around and wasting time. I think I played that one already. What do I want? I can't decide. Let's go back to this harder, better, faster, stronger. Because that's how you're going to finish out this semester, right? Okay. Okay. Nitrogen. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five.
right? Because how do I make two doubles? I can't. Two, four, six. Eight, ten. Right? A cation means it's one electron removed. Like this example. Okay, so if it's an ion, whether it's a cation or an anion, we still put the brackets around and indicate that it's an ion. Negative charge adds an electron. Another fourteen. Okay, beautiful. So as you can see, all of these examples or examples, um, two, right, two atom examples, when you put two non-hydrogen atoms into that Clark's rule, you're always gonna get 14. So that's another really quick thing to recognize, right? Whenever you have two atoms in a molecule, Clark's rule is always gonna give you 14. So you gotta add up those valence electrons to see where it takes you. When we have a cation, it takes away an electron. And in covalent molecules, okay, whether it's a cation or anion, we still put it in brackets and put the charge. If we have an anion, it adds a charge, okay? And once again, we still put it in brackets and put that charge on there. Everything has the octet rule satisfied, so every atom has eight electrons surrounding it. And if I were to go and count these up, I've used, you can see for all of these structures, right, 10 electrons each time because each one of these molecules into cyanide and the nitrogen monoxide cation, they all have 10 electrons, okay? So that's pretty cool. All right, moving along, okay. Exceptions to the octet rule. So that's what we're going to get in next. Um, and uh, let's see how we're doing on time. I think I'm gonna make this a separate video just to keep us, um, just to keep your brains from swelling with too much knowledge. Okay, folks, I will see you in the next video.